Dear students, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about channelization techniques. Okay. So already we know random access methods. We have discussed uh, multiple access methods. Now we are going to discuss about channelization techniques. Okay. So in channelization techniques, how the medium will be accessed by multiple persons so based on the frequency, based on the time, based on the code. Okay, we have three methods, frequency division multiple access, code division multiple access, time division multiple access. We are going to discuss these topics in this video. So this is computer network subject, week eight, lecture three, CDT 24. Okay, 24th topic in third unit. Okay, channelization techniques. <clears throat> so before going to discuss about this video lecture, we must be know the outcome of this lecture. After completion of this lecture, students will be able to illustrate the concepts of channelization techniques in medium access control layers. Okay. So in data link layer, we have two layers, one upper layers and lower layers. Upper layers only for link control, lower layers for access control. So in lower layer, medium access control layer, in this layer, how the channelization techniques are working that we are going to discuss in this video lecture. What is channelization? Channelization is a multiple access method in which available bandwidth of link is shared in time, frequency, or through code between the different stations. Okay. So what we are going to discuss now, how the common medium will be shared by multiple so already we have discussed the random access techniques. So now this is the medium is there. So it is based on frequency or it is based on the time or it is based on the code. So example, one session is connected here, another session is connected here. One more session connected here, another session is connected here. So how the entire medium or carrier will be shared by all these systems that we are going to discuss in the channelization techniques. For that, we have three types, uh, three channelization protocols are there. Okay, one is the frequency division multiple access method, time division multiple access method, and code division multiple access. We will see one by one. First one is frequency division multiple access method. What is that? We have to allocate the frequency for individual sessions. According to the frequency, it will transmit the data. <coughs> okay. So example, FM radio, we know that, okay. So this particular FM, uh, Radio Mirchi, so 93.8, uh, Surin FM, 98.3, something they are allocating, you know, that frequency. In that frequency only, they are able to transmit the data. So it is used for <coughs> multiple access by the common medium. Okay. How it is working? Each session is allocated a band to send its data. Okay. So example, if this is the medium means this particular band for one session, this particular band for another session. Okay. So this particular band for another session like that, the entire bandwidth will be divided into bands that will be allocated to individual sessions. Okay. So each band is reserved for a specific session and it belongs to the session all the times. Okay. So the entire transmission, the particular band will be allocated for that. So example, I told you no. Uh, frequency modulation, FM radios. So the particular range always used by the particular radio. Okay, if radio Mirchi is there means so radio Mirchi 93.5 means always 93.5 used by the radio Mirchi stations. Same like that, it will be work. Each session also use the band bus filter to combine the transmitter frequencies. Okay, so here. Band pass filter also they are using it. <clears throat> so to prevent the session interference, okay. So this particular line is there, no? So this line is there. 
so this is frequency for this particular session this is for this particular session but this overlapping is there no this overlapping may be create the interference so for that so the allocated bands are separated from one another by small guard bands okay so in this band in between these two bands the some band gap will be there why because it will avoid the interference of the signals of both the sessions that uh, band is called called like chord bands FDM is specifically predefined frequency band for the entire period of the communication. Okay, so already we know that all the time the same band will be used by the the particular session. So FDM is an access method in the data link layer. Already we know. Data link layer is in each session tells its physical layer to make a bandpass signal from the data pass rate. The signal must be created in the allocated band. Okay, so once band is allocated means the particular session will transmit the signal in the particular band only. There is no physical multiplexer at the physical layer. Okay. The signals created at each session are automatically bandpass filtered. They are mixed with, they are sent to the common channel. Okay, so this is the diagrammatic representation. You see here the entire bandwidth. This is the bandwidth. Okay, so the entire bandwidth is filtered into different frequencies. So these individual bands will be allocated for the session. Okay, so here session one is there, one is using only this blue color band. Session 2 is there. Session 2 will use only yellow color band. Like that, it's showing the diagrammatic representation for using the frequency. So this is called frequency division multiplexes. Now we are going to discuss about time division multiplexes. Okay. So bandwidth will be there, but based on the time, the entire bandwidth is used by the sessions. Okay. So previously we know that we are going to browsing center. They will allocate the time. Okay. So first 15 minutes, if you are paying for 15 minutes, means they will allocate the 15 minutes time. So after using the 15 minutes, automatically the system will start. <coughs> so based on the time, it will work. You know? Same like that. Each session is allocated a time slot during which it can send the data. So each session transmits data in assigned time slot only. Okay, so the time is there in the particular time. So this is the time for first slot, slot for first session. So this is the slot for second session. So this is the time for third session. Okay, so like that they will allocate the time slots for the sessions. What is the main problem here? Problem is when we are using the time division multiple access, synchronization problem may be there. Okay, between the different sessions. How synchronization will be there? In the particular time, the same system also should be on. Okay. So each session needs to know the beginning of its slots and location of its slots. So I must be know what time I'm going to utilize. So example, our timetable, okay. So in our class, we are using timetable. What time it is allocated for me? If Monday, this is the time. So I must be know what time they are allocated, which time my class is starts. Same like that, this should be work. Okay. So this may be the difficult because of propagation delay introduced in the system if the sessions are spread over a large area. Okay. So the entire bandwidth is allocated for the particular session, but in the particular time. So within the time it will transmit or it will use the entire bandwidth. So automatically, what will happen? The problem will be happen. That means companies are now sending very less data for maximum bandwidth. Uh, to compensate for that delay, we can insert card bands. Okay. 
synchronization is normally accomplished by having some synchronization bits at the beginning of the each slot. So what happened? So the time slot is there. So example, uh, our time table is just considered. Okay. So I have 10 to 50 class. Okay. So the previous section faculty will take 10 to 10 to 50. So you see here, I am also, he will complete the class as 10 to 50. I will start the time at 10 to 50. So what happened? Automatically, the overlapping will be there. He may be taken up to 50 minutes. I missed one minute here. So in case I will take 50 minutes, he will last one minute here. So when the time slot starts, there is a guard time should be there. Okay. So example, I will inform to the faculty. So 10.49, you come out, sir. I will take class at 10.50. So in between, that one minute is there, no? So <clears throat> example, 1.48. So one minute, 9.49 for break and I will go 10.50. Okay, so according to timetable, I'm saying. So same like that, you can think about this transmission. Okay, so this is also will be happened in the data link layer. We know that there is no physical multiplexer in physical layer. So previously we know that frequency division. Now you know I told you know this time for uh, session one. Okay. So this session, this is session two, this is session three, this is session four. So in between some gap is there, no? This is God time. Okay. So these times are God time. Now this is the reflection spot time one. You just think about it. Say the answer. 10 seconds time. Thank you. The answer is two. How the time division multiple access, why we need inset the curve time. Compensate the propagation delay. Okay. So the time starting time. It will start the propagation now. It will take some time. So that time will be taken. For that, we are inserting God time. Okay. So what is the meaning of that? So one class in one lab, another class in your classroom. You want to shift your classroom, yes? So example, second hour, you may be attended class in MM lab. Then third class, you may be attended in the classroom. You want to shift the MM lab to this your classroom. That time is there, no? That is God time. So we have to consider the propagate, propagation delay. Now we are going to discuss about third method, core division multiple access method. So core division multiple access method is differ from the frequency division multiple access because only one channel occupies the entire bandwidth of the link. Okay. So here it differs from the time division multiple access. How? Because all sessions can send the data simultaneously. There is no time sharing. Okay. What, what is the FD, FDMA? According to the frequency, it will allocate. But here in CDMA, the entire bandwidth will be used. In time division multiple access, according to the time, it will work. But here, it will work, all the sessions are worked simultaneously. How it is working? There is no time sharing. How it is working? So CDMA simply means that communication with the different cores. Okay. For example, in large room with many people, two people can talk English if nobody else understands English. So in the same room, you think about it. So one, two Tamil people are there. You all are talking in Telugu, but those two people are talking in uh, Tamil. You are unable to understand Tamil, no? So they can understand. So like that, individual language is there. So same like that, individual code is there. According to the code, they will transmit it. So another two people can talk in Chinese. We don't know and understand others like that. So how the people are interacting? Their own code is there, no? Accordingly, they will work. Same like that, we have to use in the code division multiple access method. Let us assume we have four sessions, one, two, three, four. Okay. 
so four uh, sessions are there all four are connected with the same channel okay so you just consider this is the channel as discussed earlier four sessions are connected here so thing like this one day i saying that the data from session 1 is d1 so this is session 1 so data is d1 okay this is session 2 the data is d2 this is session 3 this data is d3 this is uh, session 4 the data is d4 like that we will give the data values at the same like the code assigned to the first session is c1 okay so first session is c1 <coughs> second session is c2 third session c3 fourth session c4 now each session have individual data individual code okay so here also d2 c2 data to code two. like that each session have different code and data we assume that the assigned code have two properties first one is we multiply each code by another we will get the zero if any code will multiply with any other code it will get zero okay if we multiply each code by itself we will get the four okay so if c1 is there C1 multiply with C1 means it will get four, but if we multiply with C1 and C2, it will get zero. <coughs> with these two properties in mind, let us see how the above four session can send the data using the common channel. We will discuss with the, the next. You just see here. We will discuss now with the diagrammatic representation. So now. whatever i drawn in the previous slide the same thing it is there okay so here session 1 session 2 is there session 3 session 4 is there so here session 1 send the data d1 session 2 send the data d2 session 3 d3 session 4 d4 okay so now each session have individual code code 1 code 2 code 3 and code 4 okay so what is the data so here the session one sent d1 dot c1 second data is sending d2 dot c2 third session sending d3 dot c3 so like that common channel is there all are sharing the data and all are using the same frequency at the same time okay so now you just think okay so how it will work Session one multiplies its data by its code to get the D1 dot C1. Session two multiplies its data by its code with C2 means the one data will get. I already we have the two rules. The same code will multiply with same code means we will get four. If we multiply with another code means it will get zero. <coughs> the data and the go on channel are the sum of all these terms okay so how it is working initiation that wants to receive the data from one another three multiplies data on the channel by the code of the center okay so if i uh, you want to receive my information means you must be use my code so why because the data multiply with my code is value is four if you are multiply with your code means you will get zero so if you want to get data from me then you can multiply with my code okay so suppose session 1 and 2 are talking in each other okay two sessions are there both are talking so how it is working session 2 wants to hear what session 1 is saying so what it will do with the data it will multiply with the session 1 code that's all how we can multiply with c1 dot c1 is 4 but c2 dot c1 c3 dot c1 c4 zero already we have the rules yes so if in case session 2 divides the result by 4 to get the data from session 1 okay so the data is there it is the common data sum of this data is there if you want to session 2 wants to see the data 1 so it will multiply with 4 1 okay so now it will multiply means d1 dot c1 dot c1 d2 dot c2 dot c1 like that it will be there finally what happened here c1 dot c1 it will get 
So remaining it will get zero. So four into d one. So if any data is there divided by four, the d one it will get four. D one is there. So divided by four means automatically d one will get. Six equals us. CDM is based on the code theory, no? So the how the code is generated. Each session is assigned a code with a sequence of numbers called the chips. Sequence numbers. Okay. So some sequence it will use that is considered as the chips. So example C1 is in this sequence plus one plus one plus one plus one. C2 is in this combination. So the how the combination will be there in two power n value. How many chips it will be there? How many sessions are there according to that? So for example, <clears throat> four sessions are there means so two power four combinations it will be. Okay. How it will represent the data? The session needs to send a zero bit. It encode as minus one. Okay. If data bit is 1 means it is plus 1. If it is silence, it is not sending any data means that is 0. Okay. So you just remember this. Whenever it uh, wants to send 0 means, it will encode into minus 1. If 1 means encode into plus 1. If it is 0, no, it is not sending data means it is 0. Okay, so example you see here, uh, first it will send bit to 0. Bit 0 means it will encode into minus 1. Here also bit 0, so encoded into minus 1. But here what happened? Bit 1. So bit 1 encoded into plus 1. So here it is not sending data, it's just listening. So here the code is 0. Okay. So now we know the chips. Chips is the sequences of numbers. So chips are there. Okay. So what is going to happen? <coughs> so the particular data will be multiplied with chips. Then you will get the value. So minus 1 is there, minus 1 into 1, minus 1. Minus 1 into 1, minus 1. So all are plus 1, multiplied with minus 1 means all are minus 1. So here also minus 1 is there. Minus 1 into plus 1, minus 1. Minus 1 into minus 1, plus 1. Okay. So wherever both minus, you are getting plus. Wherever the opposite character, you will get the minus. Okay. So same like that, each session it will do. Finally, it's the summation of these values. How we will sum it? Minus 1, plus minus 1, plus 1, 0. So what is the answer? Minus 2, plus 1, plus 0. So minus 1 is the answer. Second one, minus 1, plus 1, 0, minus 1, 0 plus minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 plus 0, minus 1. So second bit is minus one. Third one, here minus one, here minus one, here minus one, then here also zero. Okay, minus one plus minus one plus minus one minus three. Okay. So last one is minus one plus one, zero, zero plus one, one, one plus zero, one. So plus one. So this is the summation of data is added with the code, it will be transmitted in the code division multiple access. Example, after getting this value, it is sending the data like this, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. So here, this is minus 1, this is plus 1. Okay. So first, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1. So here, 0, there is no data is transmitted. Here, plus 1, minus 1. So plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1. Okay. Finally, how do we work? You see here, minus 1, minus 1, 0. So, here plus 1. So, here minus 1. Here, minus 1, plus 1. Second, second part I am saying. Min that is minus 1, this is plus 1, 0. Here, 0. So, here minus 1. So, minus 1 is 1. Finally, here, minus 1. Here, minus 1. Here, no data. Here, minus 1. So, minus 3. Okay. Minus three. So then here, minus 1, plus 1, both are 0. Here also 0. So 0 plus 1. So plus 1. So here it's plus 1. This is the data is sent by the channel.
So now we are in the end of the lecture. Having completed this discussion on this particular random access method, we can. So having completed the discussion on channelization methods, now the students should be able to illustrate the concepts of channelization techniques, how the channelization is working, frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access, code division multiple access, how it is working. We know that. Okay. So it is our used for multiple access methods. So lecture level problems, you just think about it in CDMA, code division multiple access. What is the number of sequences if we have 90 sessions in our network? How to calculate it if 90 sessions are there? How many sequences will we need for code division multiple access methods? So we have 90 sessions are there. So here 90 sessions are there. So we have to calculate 2 power n. Okay, so what is the n value? So we can greater than or equal to this value. Okay. So what is the n value? We will check. Okay, 2 power 0, 1, 2 power 1, 2, 2 power 3, 8, 2 power 4, 16, 32, 64, then 128. So, 2 power uh, <coughs> in 32, 64, 7. 2 power 7 equal to 128. So, that we need 7 sequences. Or we need 0 to 7 now. So, 8 sequences. 2 power 8. 8 sequences we need for 90 sessions. Okay. We just remember the formula is 2 power n are greater, greater than, sorry, less than or equal to 9. So, for further readings, we uh, just refer the textbook, chapter 12.3, channelization, as well as you refer the weekly tutorial sheets for solving the solution. Okay. Solving the problems. Thank you very much. I hope you are enjoyed the video. Any doubt you can ask directly in the classroom discussion. Thank you very much.